don't you stand and we'll join in worship together. So 
of the in-between, in the middle of the questioning, over every worry, every fear, hallelujah, even me. So easy, I find peace here in surrendering, in letting go. Hallelujah, when the storm is relentless, hallelujah, when the battle is endless, in the middle of the in between. In the middle of the questioning, over every worry, every fear, hallelujah, even me. Hallelujah, even me. Sometimes nothing left to give. Who becomes the sweetest offering? Sometimes choosing just to sing Is the thing that changes everything Hallelujah When the storm is relentless Hallelujah When the battle is endless In the middle of the in-between In the middle of the questioning over every worry, every fear, hallelujah, even me. Hallelujah, even me. Hallelujah, even here. Maybe you're having a hallelujah even here moment today. And so I invite you into this space that God holds you, that God knows, that God is with you and for you and strengthening you, building you up even when you feel like you're falling apart. So I'm so glad for us to be together and worship today and hold each other up and uh, pray for each other and pray for those needs that are on our hearts and minds this morning. So glad that you're here, glad that you're on Facebook. Let's say good morning to our Facebook family. So glad you're here, and we hope you'll post those prayers and share peace with us later in the service. But let's, uh, let's continue this uh, sense and call to worship and uh, continue to sing. Oh, Lord Almighty, for my soul long, 
one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God, your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house, there is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house, there is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house. There is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house, there is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. ushered into God's throne room, that you feel that sense of being in God's presence fully right now. Our fire is dwindling. What is happening? <laughs> Come on. I think we should unplug it. <laughs> that, is, that is no comment on the Spirit's presence. I just want you to know. <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> Woo, won't have an actual fire, that's okay. Well, we're so glad to be in God's presence, to be with each other, and hopefully you feel ushered into that sense of being in God's presence, that that is more valuable a space than anywhere else you will spend the rest of your life, is to be in God's presence. So we're glad to be kind of ushered into that this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you are present, that you go ahead of us, that you already sent your spirit here to fill this space, to fill us and move us in ways that maybe we don't expect. Lord, we ask that you would do that now. Be here in this space now, in our hearts, filling and using us. That you would be filling us to healing that that is the power of your presence in all the ways that you can heal us. We are so thankful for this presence. In Jesus' name, amen. You're going to have a seat, and if there are kiddos here, come on up. I want to show you something. Hi, how's it going? i to see if I can fit this around my microphone. There we go. How are you? Do you guys know what this is? It's a stethoscope. That's a big fancy word. Oh, this looks like making my, can't do it with my microphone on. So when do you see somebody with a stethoscope? Like who usually has one of these? A doctor or a nurse, right? Yeah, so you, when do you go see a doctor? When do you go see a doctor? When you're hurt? You, you want to be a doctor one day? Awesome. So you will get to get one of these and help people feel better. Yeah, we go to the doctor when we don't feel good, when we need shots, when we just need something looked at, right? When we want to feel better. Sometimes we just go to, to do all of the, the well child checks of like just to make sure everything's okay. But sometimes when we're sick, we need to go see a doctor. So there are some times that 
what a doctor makes me feel better about isn't what I need. Sometimes I'm worried about something. Or sometimes I'm not feeling like I made the best choice and I feel sad that I might have hurt God's feelings. And in that moment, I'm feeling bad, but it's nothing that a doctor can do anything for, right? So who do we go to when we feel bad like that? Can we go to Jesus in prayer? Yeah, that's where I head. And actually, in our gospel today, Jesus is a healer. He will heal people physically, but also on the inside, like emotionally, spiritually. Like when we're feeling sad about something, when we're worried about something, when we're kind of feeling guilty that we didn't make the right choice, I can go, you can go to God and say, I really need healing. I need your help to feel better, to feel whole. So the same reasons that we go to the doctor for when our physical body isn't doing so well, we can go to Jesus when our, our mind and our heart aren't doing so well. Does that make sense? It's hard to understand. But when you're worried about something, can you pray? And do you feel a little better when you pray? I do. Yeah, I think I, do. I feel better when I pray about something I'm worried about. So why don't we pray right now? And then we can go hang out with Jessica. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us and for being our great healer. Help us to come to you when we are sick on the inside for all the ways you heal. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. And I hope to hear that someday you are a doctor. That would be awesome. I think Miss Jessica is ready to go uh, hang out with you guys, do a craft. Thanks for coming up. Glad to see you. Yes, she wants to be a doctor. That's awesome. And thank you to Barb. Where'd she go? Thanks for the stethoscope. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you for the ways that uh, you've walked my family through kind of a rough week. Speaking of healing, uh, it was an interesting week to be dwelling on a gospel that is about healing. Uh, my dad's going through some tests, and we don't have a whole lot of answers right now, but we're thankful that he's home and doing okay. But um, it was an interesting week to be thinking about health and wholeness in a lot of different ways. Um, thankful for the access to amazing medical care that we have right in our backyards and for doctors and nurses that want the best for us. Very thankful that my sister is a doctor so she can interpret all the jargon for us and help us kind of navigate some of the language and, and tests and all of that stuff and tell us what it all means. But it all made me think about our health and how much we take for granted, right? That health is not guaranteed, right? That, that that's never a guarantee. When you've been sick and you uh, recover, think about how much better you feel on the other side of it and how much you tell yourself, I'm not gonna take this for granted. I'm not gonna take it for granted that I'm not coughing or feeling horrible or you know, if you've broken a, a limb, like you, you don't take it for granted on the other side of that. And I hope that's kind of where we are with in our family as well, not taking it for granted. So like I said, it was interesting to have a gospel for this week that was already assigned. I didn't choose this, um, that God said, this is what you need to focus on this week was really interesting. Um, it's, it's all about healing in many different forms. So um, I'm going to read it right away so that we can kind of jump into it because maybe when I start this, you're not going to think it's necessarily about healing, but I'll explain. So this is from Matthew chapter 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. And as Jesus sat at dinner in, in, in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. 
When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come not to call right the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came and said to him, But after he was saying these things, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the mourners and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So certainly the end of that gospel can tell us a little bit about healing. But maybe you heard the first part, the call of Matthew the tax collector. And you were wondering, well, what does this have to do with healing? I do actually think it is a healing. In fact, I'm going to start thinking of the call of all of the disciples as healing. It's been so great to watch The Chosen together on Wednesdays. Uh, we only got through five episodes, but it gives you such an amazing kind of backstory for Jesus' calling of these first disciples, for all the disciples' stories that aren't in Scripture but maybe might have happened. And Matthew, I think, is one of the most intriguing characters in that whole show. I'm, I'm committing to watching the rest of it over the summer, and I'd encourage you to watch it too. Like I said, we only got through episode five, but episode six is all about the calling of Matthew. So I happened to watch that this week. Again, providential. And we are gonna, we're going to watch it too, but i got to give you a little bit of that backstory first. So... The way that The Chosen portrays Matthew is as someone on the spectrum, that he is a bit of a savant with numbers and likes to tabulate things and keep track of things. And as a, that's a kind of a new understanding of Matthew for me anyway. What isn't new is how tax collectors were viewed in Jesus' day, right? They were Jewish people but who worked for the Roman government to collect the excessive tax of Rome. And it really, it really, I mean, for, for lack of a better word, it taxed the people. It got them down to bare bones. And tax collectors made their excessive wealth off of the top of that. So as a Jew, you're taxing your fellow Jews. And it really did not create good Good, it was an animosity between tax collectors and the rest of the community. Matthew would have been an outcast in his family, in his community, in everywhere he went. He was not wanted. So the other part of the, the depiction of the chosen is that Matthew was trying to collect taxes from Simon Peter and his brother. So not only was Matthew kind of generally not liked, he was specifically not liked. So as we watch a little bit of this, uh, the Roman centurion is guarding Matthew because, again, he wouldn't have been able to navigate the city streets safely because he was hated. So this, the Roman centurion's name is Gaius. Uh, that'll be important to pay attention to later in the story. But, um, but let's take a look at Matthew's call. A mother of a son with talent like yours should be proud. She's ashamed that I could use the talent that God gave me against God. Next. 
You're good at something. You found a way to make a living doing it. It's that simple. Must be nice to live in a world so simply ordered. We live in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you gonna do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to you. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys, let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. You can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just so good. Uh, that, that, that line of get used to different. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I highly encourage you to, to check out The Chosen if you can. We have copies of it if you want to borrow them, but... This is why I say this is a healing story, that Jesus saw what was unwell in Matthew and called him to a new sense of health and wholeness. He called him to a healing that maybe he didn't even know he needed, that the rest of the world was not going to understand at all. So our scripture says that they go to a dinner party, whether it's at Matthew's house or not. We don't know from scripture, but I think it's kind of funny that, you know, you're going to be the host. That's the only way you'd be welcome. <laughs> so they're at this dinner party, and the Pharisees notice that he's eating with tax collectors and sinners, and Jesus doesn't mess around. He calls them out on that exclusion rather quickly. He said, that a physician has, has no need to be, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I've come not to call the righteous, but sinners. I think this sense of, of us watching when other people are healed, sometimes we question that, like Simon Peter, like Gaius, like all these people wondering why in the world would Jesus call and heal Matthew? For many Pharisees at that dinner party, having the Messiah right in front of them didn't cause them to ask where they were sick, but caused them to question the healing of others. And so Jesus says this quote from the prophet Hosea, 
Go learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Hosea was a prophet in the northern kingdom right before the exile. He was trying to get the people of Israel to see what health and wholeness really meant, that it wasn't just about this obligation worship. It wasn't just about offerings that meant nothing. It was your heart that God wanted, that that was going to be wholeness and healing but not just this obligation. What is God? And I wonder about those Pharisees questioning this. Did they stop to wonder, well, what does it mean that God wants mercy and not sacrifice? What does it mean for us to consider that? Are we here out of obligation or because we want our heart to be changed? Are we here to really be healed in all the ways that God can do that? Or are we here because it's Sunday morning and we're just supposed to be here, right? Now, granted, God shows up on other times other than Sunday morning, but that, that word is also for us because, friends, we can be so Pharisaic sometimes. We can be those ones saying, well, I don't know if that person really deserves healing, right? I mean, let's be honest. Maybe we don't say it out loud, but we think it. We feel it. We want God to be fair. Put that in quotes because I don't know if that is possible. In our consideration, we only want God to send blessings to those that we think deserve it. How do we see God's generosity and think that sometimes it's wasted on the wrong people? How do we see healing and inclusion and forgiveness and think only about our selfish need for it instead of those around us? Are we truly okay with God's abundant mercy? Because sometimes it includes somebody that we don't think deserves it. And until we acknowledge our own sickness, our sick humanity wants everyone to stay unwell. So like I said, this whole conversation about healing and health and wholeness, in a week that I was back and forth from the hospital many times, was really quite poignant. To have not only this interaction that Jesus has with Matthew, thinking about that as a healing and as a call for me to see other healing as God's providence and as God's abundant blessing. That whether my dad is healed or not, God is still good. That whether those around me experience healing or not, that God is still working in their lives and that they deserve that just as much as my dad does. To have this conversation about these Pharisees questioning the healing that they see in Matthew and then to have this, these stories of this leader who comes up begging, a leader from the synagogue, right? So this might have been another Pharisee potentially comes and asks for healing. And then this woman who just comes up and touches his robe, doesn't say a word. She's not actually supposed to be in public. A woman who's bleeding is not supposed to be anywhere near people. So she comes up and and kind of silently, really quietly touches his cloak because she says, that's all I'm going to need. What an amazing example of faith to say, that's all I'm going to need. He was trying to heal all of them. Not only Matthew, but Gaius and Simon Peter and the rest of the disciples and the Pharisees and those gathered at the dinner party and this leader and his daughter and this woman and everyone in the crowd. What does it mean to experience God's healing power? It was really quite poignant to think about all of that this week, to think about how we avail ourselves of God's healing 
that's right there in front of us? Do we just think we can reach out and touch the cloak? Or do we need to come on someone else's behalf like this leader? Or do we not even know we need healing until God calls us like Matthew? All of this was really poignant this week. There was a point where my parents were ready to just go home without a whole lot of answers. And my sister, God love her, being the doctor, said, mm, no, we're, we're, we're going to find some answers here. We're going to look at these things. And, and she was able to look at charts that we couldn't, you know, and understand what they meant. And so she asked some of those questions that are going to lead us down a path of healing and wholeness. And it made me wonder how often I question, how often do I reach out to touch the cloak of healing when it's right there in front of me? How often do I go on someone else's behalf for healing, knowing that God can do it? And how often do I simply leave that tax booth as quickly as Matthew did when God says, follow me? How often do you avail yourself of God's healing power? It's right there. It's right there in front of you. Do we, like the Pharisees, only see barriers and obligations and rules to follow instead of just reaching out to touch the cloak? I wonder what those Pharisees thought of the faithfulness of this leader and this woman. Can you avail yourself of as much healing as God makes possible today, while at the same time celebrating the healing of others, that God makes that same healing available to everyone all the time? Jesus desires that we come to him like Matthew, like this leader and like this woman, to believe and follow and be healed. I'm wondering what kind of healing is needed in this room right now. Let's, let's pray for it. God, I know that you desire to heal us to heal everyone in this room, whether that be a need for physical healing, for tests and answers and treatment, or that deeper emotional, spiritual healing that we all need from time to time. Lord, help us to reach out to your cloak right now so we might hear you say, child, your faith has made you well. Heal us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and join in singing. Now, I have to say something. We, uh, we choose this music about a month in advance, and I had no idea how, um, like, prophetic this song choice was. You want to put up the... <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we need a lot of that.
that's something that God reigns on our hearts as well, and so I hope you feel that today. And so we want to share this joy and love and hope that we feel. Um, I feel like there, there are two movements of the Christian. It's to know Christ more and then to make Christ known. And so we make Christ known by what we carry out into the world with us. So we, I hope you'll carry that all of that and God's peace with you. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Won't you share that with one another? Hugs, kisses, high fives, peace signs, all those good things. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to share that with one another. Hope you'll stay and have a cup of coffee and uh, share that after worship as well. You can have a seat. And I'm going to, um, we wanted to give you a bit of an update on how things are uh, for finances for the landscape project. So I'm going to call on Ken. Have him come up. Thank you. I love the sermon today. We should make that our tagline, get ready for different. <laughs> I have denied with Peter, I have doubted with Thomas, and I collected taxes for 40 years with Matthew. <laughs> so I identify with the disciples. I'm up here to give you an update. I promised that um, after I did the ask about two, three weeks ago that I would keep you updated from time to time. So I am happy to say that since um, the time when we asked up through May 31st, 
we've collected $33,525. Add in the original gift of $5,000 and the grant of $20,000. So to date, we've come up with $58,525 towards this contract. Remember that the contract is $85,000, that we still have to deal with the sign, so that may be additional in there as well. Um, so I'm looking at saying that we're at 60, almost $60,000. We're about two-thirds of the way. We're still looking for about another 40000 So I'm up here first and foremost to thank all those people who already made a commitment or have maybe even already donated that money to us. For those of you that have not yet, I hope that you prayerfully consider a gift towards this whole process. We accept gifts um, small and large. It does not matter. So whatever you have to give, if you want to give that towards the landscape, we're going to give you different ways to do that. Um, right now, there are three different ways that I can lift up for you. The first one is the easy one, and that's just simply to write a check. If you write a check and drop it in, drop it either into the collection plate, there at the doors when you go out, or otherwise, mail it into the office. But when you do that, please, in the memo, put down landscape or put some note so that we can keep track of it and continue to have this update as to where our progress is taking us. The second method is one that I and my wife have used, and that's to do a transfer. In my case, because I will admit it, I'm over 70 and a half, I was able to transfer money from my IRA without paying any of the taxes on that. We just directed them to give that check to the church. The church received the check. I don't have to pay taxes on that IRA, and I've met my commitment. So that's one to think about if you're in that same age bracket. Whether you're there or not, you can always transfer um, appreciated stock. So if you have an appreciated stock out there or a mutual fund, you can transfer that directly to the church. But in that case, I would ask you to notify me so that we can A, watch for that check, and then B, handle it as it comes in. Because when you transfer stock, there's a little bit different process in that. But that's something we would take care of on our end. The third way, which a lot of you have been using, is electronic giving. Now, if you're doing electronic giving out of your checking account, that's fine. But again, make sure that you designate to us how much of that you want to have going to, your, to the landscape project. The other way to do it is to use Vanco. A lot of people do electronic giving through Vanco. If you do not have an account yet, they're easy to set up. You go to vanco.com. When you go in there, you um, create a login and a password. And then from there, you can direct um, funds to the church from whatever account you want to choose them from. We have added a button on that screen when it comes up that says landscape. So that if you want to give it to landscape, just simply click on that button, put in the amount that's going to go in there. With Vanco, you can give monthly, you can give quarterly, you can give all at once. You can do that however you want to do it. If you're already giving in Vanco and you want to increase your giving in there, again, just visit the account, your account, go in there and do those adjustments. Again, I want to thank all of you for getting um, into this right away. We were, so we were so happy and elated to see the kinds of reaction that we were getting from the congregation. I will be around if you have questions. If you have questions at any time about the process, um, look me up and I will try to answer those. As far as the landscaping, this rain is going to help because up to this point they couldn't do a lot of the seeding. They didn't want to put anything into the ground when it was that dry. But they have started on the front. So as you go by, if you look at the cross out front, um, there's hedges that have gone in there and some flowers and plantings. They also have added two, um, two large stones underneath the um, um, cross itself. They have staked out the prairie. So if you see those little purple flags, everything inside those purple flags will be prairie. So it'll be planted in a prairie style grass and, and um, flowering that goes on out there. Outside of that is where we'll do some physical landscaping. You've also, if you look down the parking lot way, you'll see uh, a whole pile of big stones out there. Those are the future um, fire pit that will be going in and then also some stonework out in the front. So it's coming. It's slow because the weather's been, though the weather's been good, it hasn't been right. So we'll see where we go from there. So a little healing rain today was great. Thank you for coming out here and listening to me and um, take care. Yeah, it was
was great to, to see them uh, get started a little bit. But yeah, keep praying for rain because we can't plant a prairie if they're, if they're like trying to plant in cement. It doesn't work. So uh, we're hopeful that that can get started really soon and, and we'll see more and more progress. So it can rain up until next Sunday. <laughs> that we don't want rain because uh, we have a, a wonderful concert and cookout planned uh, Sunday afternoon so we hope you'll come and join us uh, Mad City Funk and a band called Shine which is a new band that uh, Jeff Lenberg and Sean Peters are a part of uh, so we hope you'll come and hear them and uh, support the youth as they offer the cookout as a fundraiser for their uh, Florida mission trip so four to six next Sunday afternoon, there are flyers out on the front table. If you want to take one and put it up around uh, the community, that would be great. Share the event on Facebook also. Uh, that's just, that gets way more uh, wider reach than, than you know. So uh, we hope you'll be here for that next Sunday. Um, also, the men's group meets Saturday morning and Common Threads, I believe, meet tu meets Tuesday, right? Tuesday evening, but the the end of the month we're not meeting. Okay, so just pay attention to other ways that you can be involved and get to know new people. Uh, lots of ways to do that, so we hope you'll look into that. At the end of this month, we have a blood drive, uh, and Deb Colway is ready to uh, kind of put you where you're able to serve. Uh, if you can bring some treats, if you can donate blood, if you can be here as a volunteer that day, she will, she will need all of that. So uh, do check the inv inf information on here and in the newsletter to be a part of that. Super Sale is the end of July, and we are starting to collect stuff. Uh, so if you have some things that you just want out of your house, uh, please bring it over here. It's also a fundraiser for our children and youth ministry, so uh, we hope you'll be a part of that. Um, the sign up to help and sort uh, will be available hopefully this week, um, so just pay attention to that. And Wacky Wednesdays, uh, we gather on Wednesdays throughout the school year for dinner and adult faith formation, but the summer feels like a different energy. So uh, we're going to get together for, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So uh, the last Wednesday of June, we're going to gather at the Wondros for a pool party. Thank you for offering that. And uh, we'll have some snacks and food together and spend some time in the pool. So another day we don't want it to rain, but it can rain everywhere else <laughs> before the cookout uh, after the cookout until the pool party um, another thing i want to just point out is um, in two weeks uh, we have the honor of having trey graff uh, preach for us trey is a member and you probably know him from youth stuff and he was on staff uh, he has finished at Augustana Rock Island uh, just recently and starts at Wartburg Seminary in the fall. And so we're so excited to have you come and preach and bring God's word to us. So thank you for doing that. June 25th. So we hope you'll be here for that. Let's, uh, let's spend some time in prayer and give God, God thanks for this, this time together and this healing. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for all of all the gifts for this earth, for our community, for our neighbors and friends. But first and foremost, we want to thank you for the power and privilege it is to pray that you want to hear from us is a gift we neglect to thank you for. So thank you for listening, for wanting to hear us. Holy One, we pray for creation, especially in our corner of it, that this little bit of rain isn't quite enough, Lord. We pray for those farmers and any who depend on the land and healthy growth of crops. Bring rain so livelihoods are sustained and the earth can produce your harvest. Lord Jesus, thank you for your gracious calling. For all of us sinners, just like Matthew, that you've called out of what was into what you're making of our lives. It's a privilege and honor to serve you, Lord. We also want to thank you for that healing that you provide. We know the need we have for your spiritual healing. Thank you also for those who offer physical healing for doctors, nurses, all caregivers. 
who serve the desire for our health and wholeness. Lord, there are many on our hearts and mind this morning that are coming to you in need of prayer, in need of healing. We pray especially for the Havertape family and the death of Craig's dad, Jim. We pray for his mom, Sheila, and their whole family. Continue to pray for Bill Lampert for his continued healing and answers. Pray for Karen Hundley Smiley and the death of her husband, Tom. Prayers of thanksgiving for Adela's successful surgery this week and for the expected healthy birth of Catherine and Eli's baby this week as well. Prayers for M and J for constant healing. Barb prays for Catherine and the death of a sister. Prayers for Irene Winkler, the mother of Joe Bly. Marilyn prays for the health of her husband. Vicki prays for continued healing for her as well. Barb prays for a daughter struggling with addiction and mental illness and for Messiah and his upcoming surgery for his family as well. And we pray special traveling mercies for our middle schoolers and Jessica headed to camp today. Lord, bless them with a great week for all the ways that you will lift them up. Lord, receive these and all our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we gather around this family table, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord invites you to this table. All are welcome. Come as you're directed. I have gluten-free wafers in the front, or there's the pre-filled cups up there if you don't want the bread and wine or white grape juice. Uh, but all is prepared. Come as you're directed. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, you're innocent stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath.
God's rescue, that this is God's coming to you and a healing of you, that even as you feel that bread and wine become a part of your body, Christ is healing it. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand as we're able and send ourselves out.